And I was a pilot in the 37th Squadron, 316th Troop Carrier Group. And I flew a, the 82nd Airborne, a stick of 21 paratroopers, into St. Mary Gliss. In the plane that I was in, there were 19 men. Uh, there was a lieutenant that led the stick. I was a sergeant, so I was the last man, and I pushed the stick. We called push the stick. I was the last man out of the plane. The uh, uh, that that night on the plane, uh, after we took off, uh, everything was fine. Uh, when we passed over the channel, uh, I could see the uh, see the. Uh, uh, water from the boat uh, to tell me that there were ships down below sailing for France. Then we, I, I saw two small islands, which I understand now are the Guernsey Island, to the west of, of the peninsula here. I, I then saw, it was light enough that I could see the shore of France and see a road and some houses. And then suddenly we ran, I don't know whether it was clouds or whether it was fog, but completely, I, 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 I couldn't see any, anything then. Uh, so the planes had to disperse, someone up, someone down, someone east, someone west. And as we approached the continent, Peninsula, we ran into a cloud bank. Went from the ground all the way up to 2,800 feet. We had 800 airplanes following us with paratroopers. Everyone got lost in the fog. It was very difficult because only 10% had navigators. So when you get caught in the fog and you can't see your own wing or anybody next to you, the danger of collision is very serious, and many probably collided and lost that night. So we flew in the dark on instruments for four, five minutes before we broke out. When we broke out, we then had to, because we could not find a leader, we had to go with a compass heading that was given to us ahead of time in operations. And we flew that heading over St. Mary Glace to the northwest side of St. Mary Glace and we gave the signal to our paratroopers to jump. jump. They jumped. It was a perfect jump. Perfect. And the next morning at four o'clock in the morning, this is the first town that was captured by the Allies. It was 1.30, uh, real dark in the morning, and uh, a lot of anti-aircraft fire coming at us. The sky was lit up. It looked like a, a Fourth of July celebration, you know? Boom, boom, boom. Planes going down and... Uh, uh, <coughs> And uh, finally, I landed uh, near St. Mary Glees, away a little bit. It was, the land was water up to here. And I landed in water up to here. And uh, I'm trying to fight my way out. The planes, the, the planes were scattered all over. They, we were supposed to drop here. Instead, they dropped us over here because the, the pilots were confused and frightened. Some of the pilots, they never fought combat before. Other pilots never flew a plane at night in combat. This was night, and the pilots were all disoriented. So instead of staying in a tight formation and find our drop zone, they broke formation. So. Nobody landed in the drop zone. We landed scattered all over. And therefore, it took us a while to reorganize again and fight as a unit. 
I want to tell and I want to compliment all of the people of the 82nd Airborne, 505th Division, who took part in that drop, and the pilots who took part in that drop. Many people think that all the pilots flew bad planes and dodged the flak and all that stuff. Oh, you can't do that. When the tracers come up and the flak comes up, you fly straight ahead and you hope and pray that you can go through safe. You know, you understand? Anyway, that's the way it was, as I remember it. We lost, we lost some people, good friends. So I was glad to go to the cemetery yesterday and pay my respects to my friends who did not survive, did not come back. God bless, rest their souls. God bless them.